Uh, Billy Kidman's second match. Remember the first one? Dean Malenko ran out of the ring, lost, got pissed off. By the way, oh, by the uh, go ahead. <clears throat> yeah. Hey, you go ahead. I was going to say something about my friend, Dean Malenko, who you've misaligned whoa, my. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I hey. have, you have mis you have misrepresented and misaligned my relationship with the great Dean Malenko. Hey, buddy. And okay. they don't mean that y'all got in a brawl and catering. That's a lie. No, that's a lie. You, you a lie. I, I'm not a lie. That's you what a lie. happened. You a motherfucking lie. I didn't get in a brawl and catering Dean Malenko because he's old and I'd beat his ass. But, 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 rather than that, Dean and I are friends. So I just want to put that out there. I just want to tell the truth here. Mm -hmm. That's not what happened. <laughs> you alive. Ask anybody who was there. Yeah. Okay. Seriously. Ask anybody who was there. And they will tell you for sure that uh -huh. you and Dean Malenko came to blows. Mm -hmm. I think it was early December. So as we're talking now, roughly six weeks ago. And I'm glad to hear that you guys have tried to patch things up. But don't you go fucking pissing up my leg and tell me it's I, raining. I'm pissing up your leg and telling you a lie. I would never fight. I would never go to blows to anybody in catering unless it was for the last piece of pumpkin pie. I told, I was told that you got up in his face and said something like, don't start no shit. Won't be no shit. No, you a lie. And whoever told you that's a lie. I feel like okay. we should mention that, um, two guys who thought they were a part of this big coup to jump from the WW WCW to the WWF. Or Shane Douglas and Conan, but both had histories in the WWF and it wasn't exactly all that awesome. So yeah, hmm. that doesn't work out. So they didn't go, they didn't go, Switch. they didn't go and Meltzer they thought they even, were. And Meltzer would even say that some of the guys like psychosis and Malenko and Guerrero probably need to think about going because they're going to be put into a, a situation, perhaps like Kai and Ty, where there's great wrestlers, but because they're not the biggest guys, they just give them a sort of funny, ha ha throwaway act, not a meaningful role within the company. And Meltzer would say for that matter, even Benoit isn't a sure thing for that very reason. Although it's hard to believe he couldn't run with the rock Helmsley and or Austin very quickly for the angle to work. New Japan has shown so many times it's better to get that relatively quickly because a traditional slow build would negate this particular angle. Mm. The In idea Japan. being that you got to throw him right into the deep water with the big dogs or they won't perceive him as being at that level. And that turned out to be the case. It took a while. You know, he makes the jump here in 2000 doesn't become their champion until 2004. So it takes a while. Mm -hmm. We should also mention that Jeff Jarrett and Scott Steiner also went to Bush, not so much in protest to Sullivan, but to express their feelings that Russo hadn't been given a fair shake. And we know Jeff Jarrett was definitely loyal to Vince Russo. I don't know much about the Scott Steiner, Vince Russo relationship. What can you tell us about that? I don't know anything. I know Scott Steiner feels that. His best run as a singles competitor was when he was named Big Papa Pump, and that came from Vince Russo. That's the only thing I can tell you about that. That 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 seems to me would be the reason that Scott would go to him. I mean, Jeff Jarrett was obviously Russo's guy, but Big Papa Pump, Scott Steiner felt Big Papa Pump was there and uh, was the big reason he was a champion and was the best time he had in this, the business. And he credits Russo for that. It's crazy to think that the two guys were watching in the ring right here, literally mm -hmm. earlier in the day, tried to leave hmm. and here they are on pay-per-view, both being recruited and pulled in different directions. Kidman being promised a U.S. title run Nash saying he'll work on getting Perry Saturn a spot in the NWO. We should mention the next day before nitro Bush met with the revolution members and Benoit. And uh, it's written by this point, while nothing was final, it did appear that Kidman's support of the group was wavering and neither Guerrero or Conan were at the show. 
Bush promised to compromise saying he wasn't going to fire Sullivan from the company because he's got a family to support, but he suggested that Sullivan be made the booker of the WCW Saturday night show. And the wrestlers were told they would never have to work the Saturday night tapings if they stayed. And thus Sullivan would have no power over their booking. He also asked the group who they thought would make the strongest booking team. And they suggested Terry Taylor, Arn Anderson, and uh-huh. Vince Russo. And the meeting ended amicably with what they thought was a compromise deal. Later in the afternoon, Bush called him in for a second meeting and told them all except Benoit, who the TV show was scheduled to be built around as the new world champion, that they were being sent home, perhaps partially because the group had filed a complaint with the human resources department of time Warner against the road agent, Mike Graham plan was that the heel commissioner Nash was going to force Benoit into three title defenses on the show with Brian knobs, Lex Luger, and a third person whose name we're not sure of. And Benoit was going to win all three matches. So clearly they're trying to play to his ego and giving him the monster push to break away from the group, which would break the opposition to Sullivan and management felt this was going to work because there didn't appear to be any major hesitation in putting the title on Benoit the previous day. Benoit instead said if they're being sent home, he was leaving and that they were together as a group. And when Bush threatened that if he left with the group, he'd be stripped of the title. He didn't hesitate and saying he was staying with the group. And at this point, if they all wanted their full release for the company, because they needed to get rid of Sullivan. So <laughs> the report is that Benoit threw the belt in a garbage can and stormed off before Nitro started, but that's incorrect. He's saying they stayed backstage for some time before the company got them new plane tickets home. And then Benoit just handed the belt to Nick Patrick before leaving. Sounds like to me, sounds like to me, Melcher had everyone's phone tapped. How it he's talking as if he was, that he was standing back there when all this happened. Well, he's getting calls from multiple guys, giving the scoop, not you. Uh, but, Fuck you're oblivious. No, you're goddamn right. But it's best to be oblivious. It's fucking best to be oblivious. This bullshit. You can't do your job. If you're listening to everybody chirp. 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 I should mention mm. the, um, the HR thing with Mike yeah. Graham. We've talked about that a little bit. When did yeah. you first hear that story here on the show? Yes. As sure you, did. As you may remember, allegedly Mike Graham goes to Benoit and says something like, man, I don't, I'll tell you this. If the roles were reversed and I was Kevin and I'm paraphrasing, but supposedly he said something like if I was Kevin Sullivan and you stole my wife, I wouldn't put the belt on you. I'd put your fucking head on a stick. Mm-hmm. And then of course they told HR and boom. That's all she wrote. Hmm. Yeah, but Mike got fired for the uh, blacktop bully thing. Yeah, but he was brought back by that point. By this point, he was. Yeah. Okay. Of course. All right. Mike was a very volatile guy, and he came from the old school shit, you know, with his dad and Booker's ruled everything and. It was, did you see Kidman's head hit the, right there. Fuck. Sold the head too. Sold the head. He did. He reached in. <laughs> if you go to Vegas, I'm going to get somebody to sell the head. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. That's good. So when are we going? Oh, oh, wait a second. We've got to, uh, when are we, when are you coming back from Vegas? On Monday the 3rd. Which means we either got to do our uh, podcast before or do it during. And the last time I. Uh, <laughs> you, you got <laughs> obliterated. So. <laughs> yeah. And then we had a lot of people leave. Didn't want to listen to me anymore. After they said Shivani was too fucked up to do the podcast. Well, Fuck. Well, speaking God, of, there's 52 shows a year. Speaking of uh, fucked up, that was a fucked up spot. By the way, we should mention, we figured out something for Patreon. We're doing our big low key, big hog get together weekend in April. Am I right? That's right. The last weekend in April. We sure are. Billy Kidman gets the win there. Mm -hmm. So mark your calendars. If you haven't already, I guess it's April 24th, 25th and 26th low key, big hog get together here in Huntsville, Alabama. I can't believe you're coming back to Huntsville again. I thought I would have to travel, but I'm grateful. No, I, you know, I thought we had really, I was thinking about it and I, I said something to Dave about it, that, uh, we had such a good time in Huntsville last time. 
why change it up? We did. We had a lot of fun in Huntsville and, uh, Huntsville's small town, small city, so to speak. And, uh, I had a great time, a lot of things to do. And, uh, maybe if we're lucky, they're going to, uh, rocket city wrestling will be running that weekend too. <laughs> Oh, here's what we need to do. We need to get game changer wrestling to come run here. Yeah. Why not? I'm just saying, can you imagine Tony Schiavone in the middle of a Mance Warner WCW reunion show and Mm -hmm. Nick Gage comes out and staples Effie's underwear to your head and Chris Dickinson picks you up and Schlack gives you a table shot. Chris Dickinson's not going to do shit to me. You're a Chris Dickinson fan? No. I work for a major wrestling company. They ain't gonna do shit to me.